Professor Gewillig, he is a professor of pediatric and congenital cardiology at the Catholic University Hospitals of Leuven in Belgium. He is, I might say, renowned. He is renowned on his work on the Fontan circulation, and he has brought us um, a very sophisticated insight in not only how the Fontan circulation works, but also how it may deteriorate, deteriorate during its functioning and may eventually lead to failing and how to better understand this failing Fontan circulation and which interventions can be done in order to avoid a further deterioration of patients who um, have this circulation. So it's my pleasure, Professor Gewillig, to give you the floor for your presentation. Well, thank you very much for um, inviting me to, to share some ideas. Um, I've heard all the previous speakers, it was very interesting, and um, just to, I mean, I will repeat a few things, um, just to give a blunt message, how should you deal with a failing uh, Fontan? I think the best strategy is to avoid it, because once it starts to fail, it is very, very difficult to get out of it. And allow me to, to give, I mean, I... I uh, have the disadvantage of having some age and that allows me to to look at things backwards with some perspective and this is my first slide it also will be my last slide but uh, with the second half what did I learn I mean as you know the, the Fontan does exist over 50 years now what was I taught well it was taught that the uh, Fontan operation was very complex surgery and that it had to be performed by the most performant uh, cardiac surgeons because it was very, very complex. That typically a Fontan ventricle is big, dilated, and dysfunctional, and also that there is a big problem with afterload and systemic vascular resistance, which in, in this case almost is, is uh, uh, called in, in, in one name. Very frequently, uh, the clinician is confronted with a picture of heart failure, which means congestion and low output. And because we speak about heart failure, then we release our heart failure strategies. And you know the four uh, prime uh, handles of, of dealing with that. Uh, you are all very much acquainted with the formula of cardiac output, which is stroke volume times heart rate or written in another way. And if we want to treat failure, I mean, uh, we have been taught to improve any possible level that you can think of because it always may help. And we, uh, in those years, I was taught that the heart is the center of the circulation or even the universe. But uh, the fact that we have over here this meeting um, reflects that some of us have been frustrated when dealing with uh, the, some of the problems, especially in the Fontaine circulation. Um, in order to understand very well the, 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 the problems of a Fontaine circulation, we have to first think what are the advantages of a, a normal circulation and how do we think about it? And can we extrapolate the way we think about a normal circulation? Can we really extrapolate that to a Fontaine circuit? Here you have a cartoon of what should be a biventricular circulation with over here the left ventricle, the right ventricle. So the left ventricle will take the pressure up to the aorta. There we will lose all the energy and the systemic vascular resistance. The right ventricle will pump it up in the pulmonary arteries. And again, we will lose all the energy in the pulmonary vascular resistance. We know this formula, cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate or anti-stock volume ejection fraction and heart rate. The characteristics of such a circulation, it should have 100% at rest and with exercise, they can increase, there's pulsatility, well saturation. And this formula, uh, we are used to work with it. Why? Because the, uh, the most often the problems we are dealing with is left ventricular disease. And we have learned that this formula contains the handles that will um, think, make us think efficiently about such a circulation. The big problem is, can we extrapolate that? 
And this slide already has been given uh, um, previously, um, but allow me because it is very, very important. Here are some very, very basic principles that will dominate or should dominate the way we are thinking about Fontaine uh, circulation. First of all, just let's look at here the center uh, bottleneck. I mean, it's clear that there is a bottleneck and the flow through that bottleneck is determined by the resistance of the bottleneck itself, the amount of push above and the amount of pull down below. I mean, everybody will agree on that. What happens with a Fontan circuit is that you put multiple bottleneck in series. Yeah. And again, I think everybody will agree that if you change something at this bottleneck over here, unless you make a major change, it will not affect the overall flow through all, throughout the whole system. And that means that we have now the concept of a critical bottleneck. In every system like this, there will be one bottleneck that will determine the flow throughout the whole system. It's actually the only thing to work on. The other bottlenecks, like this one over here or this one over there, you can enlarge them a little bit, you can polish them a little bit, you can do something about it. But to be very honest, the final result will be very irrelevant for the overall flow throughout the system. And that is something we have to take in mind. Also important, how do you improve flow in a circuit when an obstruction occurs? So here we have the obstruction. How can you deal with it? Well, the typical answer is either you push harder upstream over here, or you deal with the obstruction over here, or you pull down, you pull harder downstream. If you then, however, ask which is the most efficient or the most um, uh, e the easiest, well, very simple. I think everybody will agree. Deal with the obstruction will be the most efficient. Push harder is the easiest, and usually pull harder downstream is the least efficient of all. I think you as intensivist, as, as an anesthesiologist, you have seen many, many examples of that in your daily clinic. Uh, 